my name's Dan. I need to make some picture frames. One's for a really late Christmas present and the other one's actually shop related. Unfortunately, the miter sled that I had for my old saw won't fit my new one, so I'm going to have to make another one. So I figured this would be a good project to share. To make a sled, you really don't need a whole lot of material. For the base, you need a piece of sheet good. In this case, I'm going to use half inch MDF. You need some stock milled down to the proper thickness to make runners, and then you need some stock for the actual fence. In this case, I'm going to use um, eight quarter soft maple that I've milled down to about one and three quarters. And then I haven't fully decided yet, but I think I'm going to include this piece of T track that I've had hanging on the wall for several months now, just so I have an easier way of adjusting the fence, but it's easily doable with just a clamp and a piece of scrap wood. Okay, we're over at the table saw now, and I've done a little bit of work. Um, I think I should probably mention before anything else that this is not my design. I actually found this in an old issue of Find the Working Magazine. Um, so in my opinion, the first thing you want to do in making your sled is actually make the runners for the, the, um, for the actual table. Now everyone tells you, and I'm sure a lot of people probably already know, you always want it to be quarter sawn stock. But the trick is, you actually want to buy flat sawn stock mill it to the proper thickness so you can sit it in like this and then you can actually join an edge then go to your bandsaw or even on your table saw um, cut it to all oversize usually quite a bit and then you can then send it through the planer again to bring it down to thickness now these particular tracks are actually about a sixteenth of an inch if you, I mean I can, it's perfectly flush with this and this is a six inch rule is actually 64th of an inch thick and it's perfectly flush here so these are just a little bit oversized and the reason for that is because we're actually going to use the actual slots themselves to line up um, to line up on the base. Let me grab the base real quick. between the runners and the MDF. So when it comes time here, in just a little bit, we'll line this up, we'll apply some glue to the runners, set the, the base on top, and then we'll just apply some weight. Now when it comes time to actually glue down the base to the runners, you want, you want the base to be roughly at a 45 degree angle to the runners. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's nice if it's close. And one of the tricks you can do with that is, most of us have our fence to be really, really close to, really close to parallel. Maybe it's out by a thousandth or two in the back, but really close to parallel with the miter slot. So what you can do is, if you have a big triangle, in this case I have, I have this one. What you can do is you can take your triangle, clamp it down back here, or you can just sit it there. I need to clamp. You clamp it down to your fence. And now you have a reference surface. Since your fence is roughly parallel to the miter slot and the triangle is at a 45 degree angle to the fence, when you line this up, assuming everything clears, you can move this around and now you can be assured that this base is pretty close to 45 degrees to the miter slots. I've already done a little work. I've got some lines here and here and then way down here and up here where I actually have laid out the piece right where I laid out the base right where I want it just so I know where to apply glue. So let me see if I can get some glue out. Don't need a whole lot. This isn't a really high stress part because most likely you're probably not going to use this every day. Clean the brush a little bit. Let's see. A little bit past the lines, it squeezes out, you get some table saw top, it's not the end of the world. And you can just scrape it off, clean it up, and then you'll be good to go.
looks good, okay. So now, got to keep all the stuff out of the way I don't need. basically just using, I want this corner to essentially be right in line with the center of the slot for the um, riving knife. I'm a little bit over. There we go. So, I'm pretty close to lined up. Doesn't have to be perfect. All you do is drop it down. Make sure everything's close to lined up. Put some weight down and then I just get to, in this case I have a bunch of brand new one gallon containers of cutting oil and stuff like that from my lathe and my mill. Okay, it's been a little over an hour. The glue's had time to set up. I've already come back and I've trimmed the edges off so I don't need that excess sticking out. And as you can see, get in here. Gotta get it lined up. It's, it'll slide, but it's a little tight. I'll fix that later. But all it's pretty good. But the issue is now it's not actually sliding on the base because the runners were a sixteenth of an or a sixty-fourth of an inch oversized to guarantee that they stuck up so I could get good glue contact with them. I now need to trim them. Now uh, slide up here against the stop, I'll clamp down here in the corner. I don't have an actual dedicated work finish with pull downs and everything. sheets of paper and trim them so they fit down here to lift a board that's actually undersized up. That'll work. Um, but for me this was just the method I prefer because it was just easier. So take a couple good shavings. Try to make sure you keep the plane flat. And then all you really want to do is Once you've taken some, taken a few passes, sit the, pull, the uh, sled back down. And what you want to do is you just want to come down, look, and really ideally you'd like to be able to look and see just a little bit of light underneath the actual um, runner. I don't have any, so I'll keep going on this side. Doesn't really mean you need to have a lot. Just enough, just so you know that you're not riding on the actual runner. Even that would be super bad, but it's probably a little more accurate to be riding directly on the base. And I've got a little tape here, so I gotta adjust my blade just a little bit. My angle to the angle to the board.
can now see light all the way across, so I know this one is not going to touch the bottom. So now I just have to do the other one. Apparently, I didn't have enough glue on the leftmost runner because I had just finished planing it, putting it down, checking it. I verified that I had enough clearance underneath, and then when I picked it up, I snapped it off. So I looked at it, and it looks like I kind of had a glue star, a glue star joint. So I'm going to have to show you the paper method after all. So what you want to do is like this. This is just some um, printer paper, essentially. You just want to stick it down in your miter slot in place. Then you want to put your runner down in that's now actually below the surface. And then this will lift it up. And yeah, that's the right way. So now it's, it sticks up well above. So it's, then I have to go back in, reapply glue. Looks like I got a clog there, so I'll get rid of that. Some more glue in. Try and put a little extra on. If it squeezes out, it gets on the the saw top. It doesn't really matter a whole lot. main and most important thing is that the runner actually stays attached to the base. face as I can, I can get it. There's maybe a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch cup in it across uh, three feet. Uh, I measured it with my straight edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it down on each end. It sticks out past each end of the, of the base. So I'll line it up with my line, clamp it down, carefully, just get it pretty close. I mean, as with anything else, it's not that the, you know, it's exactly along the line. This has to be close. Same thing at this end. Make sure it didn't move down here. Mother Nature is playing nice, so I'm in the shop again, and hope, tonight I hope to finish up the sled. The next step is to actually uh, attach the smaller, I guess you'd call this, I don't know if you'd call this the starter fence, but basically this is the fence you reference off of to make the initial cut. 
Um, so to get this, this, fit, this fence set nice and square, I'm going to use my triangle here. And all I'm going to do is get it set up where it looks like it's, it's good and square here. You want the outside corners here to meet relatively close. And this looks fine. Everything looks square and lined up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully not move it. I'm going to clamp. the square to this fence. Verify this one's still warning nice and true along this edge. Edges are still good. So that I can clamp this one the same fashion. And now these Two clamps should be forcing these two fences to be perpendicular to each other. I'm going to add one more, just right here. I'm actually going to clamp this fence to the base. You can never have enough clamps. big enough to get uh, the screw head in. A little bit bigger. Okay. What did I do with... Oh, there it is. Momentarily misplaced the driving bit I wanted to use. That actually lifted up the um, the fence. So. Now 
tight so I can take this clamp off here. Since it's no longer needed, I can hang it up. And I can drill one more hole, drive one more screw. I think here it'll do fine. Flip it over. Take the clamps off. And everything looks nice and square to me. Can't get the square to rock or anything like that. Any fashion that I can feel, or I should say any amount that I can feel. Well, maybe just a little bit. No? Okay. So the one other thing I need to do is grab one of my cheap beater drill bits. going to drill a hole. This is the hole I'm going to actually hang this jig on the wall with. No. So the last step, that's right, the last step before I, this jig is done is to actually go back and cut the final uh, slot. 